I am thinking about pulling the old Capri inside here. Uh, I've got some longer lug studs to put into the back so that my wheels are clamped down correctly. I need to cut the trunk pan out of it because it actually fell out the other day. I was moving some stuff around and the wheels fell out of the bottom of it because, you know, it's Capri and they rust. So you Capri guys, I'm going to give you a little love on that part. Um, so I will probably pull that thing around into the alignment rack and then I got another item in the backyard that I want to get the fuel line fixed on because it's a burnout competition season and I kind of think I want to get that thing back into motion. Uh, that project stalled a couple years ago and I just haven't had the time or motivation to work on it so maybe we'll get back to that too. Let me get this free moved around. Grab my key. need to put a new spring on the brake pedal because the brake pedal keeps the brakes applied. It doesn't return all the way. So I'll have to do something about that. Uh, today I want to focus on the rear lug studs and maybe get the rear trunk, uh, the hole in the rear trunk maybe patched up. Uh, but then I'll be driving this thing because I can. Well, it's 1974 Capri, four-cylinder Pinto motor. Pinto. It's about time for me to get to work on the inside of this turd. But the trunk pan's what I'm worried about today. I might get to, ah, the exhaust if I can get to it. Hey, there's, there's no bottom. It's bottomless. Yeah. She's rough, but she runs. Yeah, that actually looks pretty cool. I do have the uh, more aggressive front spring in this from Team Blitz. They uh, definitely make it handle way more aggressively. It makes it a lot more fun to drive. But you can see, I don't have a very good lug nut protrusion, so that's what my goal is right now. Let's get the wheels off this thing. Let's see 
we can have a couple of quick wins. So I was getting maybe half of that lug nut contact, which is less than desirable. I just frequently fix stuff. And sometimes I get it right. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Sneaking in there. Something's wet in there. Wheel cylinder's new. Shouldn't be the wheel cylinder. Hopefully it's not the axle seal. So I was worried about the lug nut contact on my uh, lug studs with these wheels and I decided to get some longer lug studs. I called up Norm over at Team Blitz and said, Hey Norm, do you have longer bug nut studs? And he said, well, yeah, I do. What size do you want? I said, I don't know, surprise me. And basically, we went with about an inch longer than factory. Uh, and I think that'll work great. Now, these are so long that I either need to make a window in the backing plate or I need to unbolt the axle shaft to install these. And I think I'm just gonna unbolt the axle shaft. It's only four bolts. Um, we'll see what kind of problems that causes me, but um, you know, it is what it is. It looks like the axle seal's leaking on this side anyway. Um, so I'm probably gonna end up getting some axle seals and axle bearings and collets. Uh, so, you know, whatever. It is what it is. It's an old car, it needs bits. Those look like 13s? 12s? 13s? I don't know. Let's grab some tools. So I had a fella stop by and he's like, hey, I, uh, I always drive by here. I was wondering what you do. I'm like, uh, it's automotive services, automotive repairs. He's like, really? Like, yeah. He's like, yeah, I, uh, an estimate to do rear brakes on my Jeep Wrangler for $900. I'm like, oh, were they doing calibers and stuff too? He's like, no, just pads and rotors. I'm like, well, 900 bucks at the dealer doesn't sound off. He's like, yeah, I'm doing it for a lot less than that. I'm like, I'm sure you are, but you can't uh, can't compare doing it yourself prices to professional repair prices. He's like, yeah. I'm like, and I'll admit that $900 for rear brakes is a little excessive. He's like, yeah, but I can't get the lug nuts off. And I'm like, all of them or just a couple? He's like, no, I got two. And one of them is really rounded off now. I'm like, oh. So you were using too shallow of a socket to remove your lug nut. He's like, yeah, that's what it looks like. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Got to get the right tools to do the work. Well, it looks like these are just a dust shield and backing plate bolts. This is a C-clip type axle. So we need to pull the rear cover off, pull the center pin from the differential, try not to cross thread that. That's what I get for not looking at the directions before I started. I will definitely get some axle seals coming for this because this one is definitely leaking. The other side's nice and dry, but since I'm pulling these out and putting them back in, more than likely they're going to leak. So I might as well just get new axle seals coming for it. I'll just call up Norm at Team Blitz. I'll probably have them on the shelf. He probably knows exactly where they are. fumble these around a bunch because my fingers don't work anymore. Come on, gravity. Give me a favor. Let me have a pass. Oh well. I make mistakes. I usually admit to them too. Because everybody makes mistakes. Alright, well, what's the over-under on these uh, on these bolts coming out? <laughs> without breaking. I'm going to cut that off before it cuts me.
think let's get some safety glasses, shall we? All right, the nippers take too long, and this metal was paper thin when it was new. Second thought. That big black thing right there in the background is a fuel tank. Probably not wise to be sending sparks all over it. Which also rules out the plasma cutter. <laughs> We'll just use the cutters. Ow! That hurt. Oh, that went right under my nail. It's gonna leave a mark. I don't have to listen to that dragging around on the ground anymore. That's a bonus. If you thought that all three were going to break, you were incorrect. None of them broke, which is impressive. Oh, I'm going to look at that brake line wrong. I'll be building one of those today, probably. Oh, I'm going to have to pull the sway bar off, too. Extra stuff. But I guess if it's got to be done, it's got to be done. It's kind of the way this stuff goes. You fret over doing something, and then it's like just get to make, get to work on it, get it done, see it through. It's the hardest part is getting re-motivated to start back up on it. I think a lot of us talked ourselves out of doing the work instead of just going out in the garage and doing it. I'll leave that one hooked. So do these have gaskets or are they glued on? We glue them on here most of the time. What do you guys put your differential covers on with when you do them wherever you're at? I will say that's one of the cool things about the whole YouTube platform is being able to communicate with people on the other parts of the world. Oh, that is so gross. Oh. I'm going to have to get Austin's Pontiac in here. I wonder if his rear differential is going to be as gross as this one on his Pontiac that he's building into a race car. Should actually be a pretty cool car when he's done with it. It's nice to see him making headway on it for sure. Okay. Doesn't smell horrible. I could have probably just saved that and reused it. It's in pretty good shape, but it's also, you know, 50 years old. Coming right at me. Seven, seven, eight. Oh. Tiny little dinky rear sway bar. Does it even do anything? Ooh, that park brake cable's about to give its last park brake.
Well, there's no chunks. There's no moisture in it. That's a pretty good start. Where's my bolt? Must be over here. Is it just a roll pin? I don't see any C clips. The directions lied. Well, poop. I didn't need to pull the cover. I guess I needed to just be more aggressive and remove the axle out the way I thought it needed to come out the original time. Look at how small that ring gear is. That's amazing. My exhaust, on the other hand, it's pretty bad. All right, well, I'll go back to trying to pull the axles out the way I originally thought I needed to do it, and then I second-guessed myself. So, in reading the directions further, they had two different designed uh, ax rear axles in these cars. So they had a bearing retainer plate, which is what I originally thought this was, and I just needed to grab a slide hammer and be more aggressive with it, and it would have popped right out. Instead, I second-guessed myself and pulled the diff cover um, because there there was an axle offered in this car that was C-clips, and that was what I pulled up on my uh, data, um, my mechanics data from uh, ProDemand. And then I found another excerpt where there's uh, also an axle, which is this axle uh, with the retainer clip style, and it specifically says to use a slide hammer to pull it out. Which means I'm probably going to destroy something taking it apart. And that's fine. I'll just get uh, bearings and seals ordered for it. Um, but I'd like to get the studs in. Because why not? I'm here. Might as well get it done. Uh, let's drop this back down. We'll let the rear diff drip dry. And then we'll put the cover back on. We dropped about three pounds of uh, weight off the back diff by cleaning the goo off of it. So that's a plus. Grab my puller. All right. We're going back now. Gotta have this thing out of here for Monday. Got alignments to do. Probably. Oh, well, that was done. <laughs> Remember how I said I make make mistakes all the time? Yeah, I need those. Because that's what I'm going to use to attach to the thing. I'm a dummy sometimes, I'll tell you what. It's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. I'm getting ahead of myself is what's going on. I'm thinking like five steps down the line. The slide hammer's seen a lot of use. It's a a little bent, a little twisted, but it still gets the job done. I like to make sure my threads are fully engaged into the puller. And then they pop out just like that. Just like I thought they did when I started. <laughs> so. Stick our new studs in. That's amazing. Assuming they're the right size. And they appear to be. Thank you, Norman. Team Blitz. Guy knows his stuff. Actually, we can put this back in now. Oh, that was so easy. 
when I took it apart the way I thought it needed to come apart, it worked. Well, I moved you over here because I think the sunlight out there is probably washing out the picture. And it, probably not great looking at a blinding light in the background. Um, so I normally have this in my toolbox in a very specific place and right now all that's in there in this place is this. So apparently it didn't get put away the last time it was used. Which means when I need it, it's not there. So I'll just continue on with the old washer method because it's effective enough to get this where I need it to be. Good. It's super tight on these leaf springs, so I may end up pulling the, the wraps off the leaves. As you can see how close this is. Um, but, so I may just re remove both of these. There's one here and one in the front. But they fit really nice. I have really good lug nut contact with these deep. Uh, these were actually Jeep CJ lugs. And they're uh, a full depth threaded and capped, so they look nice, but the, the studs protrude all the way through these right up to about there, which is nice. Much better setup. Now I actually feel like I can drive this thing down the road without the wheels falling off. You can see I have really good protrusion of the lug stud now. So that was the goal. diff cover going back on so it can start drying. Uh-oh. Guess it's a good thing I looked at that. Although me scrubbing it off is probably what exposed it, but there was a brake line tab welded there and it rusted through. So now we have a new service port. Uh, let's see if I can weld that up. Let's see if there's anything to weld to. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this in here without making a big mess of it. I uh, welded my hole shut because that was the easiest solution. And I went in there way easier than I thought it was gonna. I'm actually glad I found that now instead of when I was out driving this thing when the rear end locked up, would have locked up from being empty of fluid. So, my calamity of errors ended up in a personal win, I guess, because I found something that could have been a critical failure when this thing was out and about on the road. I'll take it. I've already torqued my lug nuts. They've all been torqued to 75 foot-pounds. 
I'm going to drive it and keep torquing the lugs over here because those studs aren't entirely uh, seated. And I may end up pulling that axle shaft back out and putting it in the press to get those studs to full seat. We'll see. Well, that's where we'll leave this one. The uh, Lean Mean Green Capri. Uh, it's been a long, long time since we showed you guys anything with this vehicle. But that's because we're so busy we don't really have a chance to work on our own toys. However, it is back on its feet. Uh, front lug nuts are fine. We got plenty of engagement back there or up there. Rears are now done. We're good to go. Rear differential is no, not, no longer uh, holy, which is good. Uh, obviously, the exhaust is leaves a little bit to be desired, but that's for a future date. Um, obviously, there's lots of work to be done with this Capri. Uh, unfortunately, it's one of those things that when we get a chance, we can squeeze some things in here and there. Uh, do apologize to all you folks that came to us for Capri content. Uh, it's a little tricky to be able to get it done, but we'll do our best to improve that over the next couple of months. Anyway, that's where we're going to wrap this one up. Thanks for being here, guys. A um, little bit of update on what's going on with this Capri. I will uh, also tell you that as a teaser... There is another one in the backyard. And the reason it's here is because of the other one that's in storage. So there is some Capri content coming, and we think you're going to like it. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Take care.